just really excited for our kids. Obviously, it's it's been a tough stretch, and and then with a young team, um, you know, I, I don't think we talked about getting a first win in the Big Ten, but just consistent improvement. And uh, you know, again, to to be back home and um, you know probably play one of our best, if not our best, defensive game of the year. Uh, to hold a team without a, you know, to one point over nine minutes of the second quarter, uh, you know, to five points in the whole quarter itself, you know, just really excited. And we, and we did it with some kind of unconventional lineups due to some foul trouble. So um, being able to put more pieces together throughout the game, you know, we did a really good job rebounding the basketball yesterday. Um, you know, we were unselfish with the ball. Obviously, Amani Lewis is playing at a high level, as you mentioned. Uh, but got contributions as usual from Sydney Hilliard and Estella Moscow. And, and then some people off the bench just, just made some, you know, just great energy plays that, that really allowed us, I, I think, to push the lead out uh, and be able to close out to get the Big Ten win. So, uh, you know, the, the, the kids have worked extremely hard. And, and, and again, I, I know obviously league is as strong as it's ever been. Um, you know, now to see the fruits of their labor be able to, produce the victory, I think, especially with a young team, gives them that experience to be able to move forward. A uh, question from Alec. Coach Zippers, hey, uh, you guys played Maryland pretty tough two weeks ago here in Madison. Uh, that's obviously where you're headed next. Uh, some things to carry over from yesterday uh, into this in this battle now with Maryland? Yeah, I, I think one thing, Maryland is as good a rebounding team and, and, and scores from all five five places on the floor. And, um, you know, the interesting part, since we played them a couple of weeks ago, we, we played twice as many games as they have due to postponements and cancellations. And, um, you know, so, so again, I, I think they were at the end of this kind of a similar type of road trip we're about to go on, you know, they had played Minnesota on that Thursday and, um, you know, they, they only played, they only played seven kids in our game, but those are as good as seven kids as there are in the league. So, um, you know, I, I think for our kids, I think that was a game to show when, you know, when, when we have belief and, and, and then aggression and stayed in the game. And, you know, I thought, again, we, we held them to 79. They're such an explosive offensive team. You don't often say you hold somebody to 79, but that's, you know, 16 points below their average. But, you know, we're going to have to be really good in transition, uh, you know, to, to, to be able to stop them, to make them run half court offense. And again, uh, you know, we've got to be really good on, on the glass on both ends. And if we can do that, I, I think, again, they, they play so fast, they try to get as many possessions. Um, we've got to be able to do what we've done the last two games on the backboards and, and win that battle and, and then take better care of the basketball. We did that Thursday. We didn't do as, that as well yesterday. Um, but again, to give ourselves more possessions. We got a question from Dennis Punzel. Hey, Jonathan, long time no see. I know. Uh, you mentioned Imani, and she had probably kind of a quiet start to the season, and she's really come on lately. Is that a health issue? Uh, she had to make adjustments. What have you seen happen to her? Because she's been such a mainstay for her first two years plus. Yeah, you know, I, I think as we talked about it, I think the start of the season, there was, you know, the, you know, uh, I think not getting cleared in the pre in, in the in the preseason practices until about you know the, the beginning of you know beginning of November um, you know and, and you hope in a junior year being able to get back but but I think she's somebody that needs time needs time needs to have practice time I, I think that helps her um, I think the understanding of what it is like in night in and night out in the Big Ten um, is something that's given her you know more confidence. Um, I've been pleased because obviously she's rebounding the ball, but, but she's making more of a concerted effort defensively, which we really, really need from her. And, you know, yesterday, uh, you know, we, we were having to play her at times with Sarah and times without and having her play the five. But um, I think offensively, the consistency has been much better and how she scored the ball recently. You know, she's gotten to the free throw line. You know, she, she's hit her 15 to 17 foot jumper. She's put the ball on the ground. You know, yesterday, you know, she, she has the 16 rebounds and, um, you know, she had three or four other offensive rebounds. She got her hands on that either somebody else got or didn't end up going our way. But um, I think feeling through the process, I think it's, it's, it's a multitude of things. I, I think knowing we need her and having those discussions with her 
Um, you know, at times I think kids, especially when they're a junior and they've had success their first couple of years, um, have to be reminded and, and, and rewatch why they've been successful. Uh, it just doesn't happen. And, and I think she's done, she's done a good job of putting extra work in behind the scenes. Question from Brian Posick. Hi, Jonathan. Um, you know, it's, it's fun watching uh, Amani play. What, what is she like as a person? Because she's so engaging and, you know, the, the chances I've been able to see on Zoom or even in press conference situation before, she just seems to be smiling. But growing up, you know, loves being a leader. What, what's it like uh, working with that young lady? Yeah, she's got an unbelievable personality. And, and, and she, uh, you know, she cares deeply about being a really good basketball player. But I, I think what we've seen from that leadership standpoint, Brian, is um, an understanding now of for two years to have older players look over, look look after her and engage her and everything like that. There's a little bit of the passing of the torch uh, of her having to do that, you know, with the five freshmen, you know, with 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 with, with the sophomores, obviously with the two transfers, um, is having to go out of her way. At the same time, I, I think I think you see a young woman who's who's growing up off the basketball court and, and engage in the community, uh, engage in things that are really important to her. And, and whether that be, you know, how we can be better educated uh, as a team uh, about things socially, uh, you know, about equality, you know, about politics, um, you know, it's just, she's somebody, she, that, that smile is so engaging. And it, it's really fun to see um, cause I think she can have conversations in different ways with a lot of people on our team. Um, and I think that helps you build that trust and that chemistry on the floor. So, um, it's out of her, out of her comfort zone a little bit. She's naturally an introvert. Um, but I, but I think understanding her off the floor has helped people understand her a little bit better on the basketball court. Just do you, if you don't mind, I got a follow up too. Yeah, I mean, go for it for somebody. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, there've been a lot of good players to come through this program and she's hitting statistics right now that are pretty impressive with still a year plus to go too. But to see somebody like that in your program that you recruited to grow up like that, how does that make you feel? Yeah. You know, I, I think it's, it's, how do you keep them, you know, keep pushing them to, to improve, you know, I, I think when you've scored the ball and rebounded the ball uh, at a high level, you start being able to build an e even higher bar for, for her to, to accomplish. And, and sometimes those are things, Brian, that aren't seen on the, you know, that aren't seen, seen statistically. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, Amani can get 14 rebounds and we're on her because, you know, we're saying, Hey, you know, the person you were guarding got three or four offensive rebounds, you know? And, and so I, I think understanding you probably can't have that same conversation you know, as a freshman and part as a sophomore, because they, they don't understand that. They, they, they all of a sudden look at that and, and think that's a, you know, a, a discredit of what they're doing statistically. And, um, you know, I, I think her team was so excited. You know, we jokingly said, like, if, if it means she's going to get 22 and 16, shoot, I'll bring a basketball in and get it painted and give it to her, you know, before every game. Um, but, but I think she's still her harsh, harshest critic. And I think that, 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 how critical she is of herself is maturing as well to be able to see those things um, that, that sometimes as great as the statistics look you know, those things that don't hit the stat sheet directly on somebody's name that can help lead to a victory. And I think that's, that's a fun part. I think Brian, to be able to see, to push an elite level player even further for them to continue to improve. 